Hello and welcome to another video tutorial about technical analysis. In this video I want to start a new video series in which I will talk about the Elliott Wave method. Um, this will be a longer video series. The Elliott Wave method is quite complex, there's a lot to take in, but I believe it's worth it. I've been using the Elliott Wave method to analyze charts for years now in my own trading and um, yeah, I've been using it also for TA videos on my second cryptocurrency channel and I've had a lot of inquiries about, you know, can you make tutorials about how to actually use the Elliott Wave method and how to understand it because it is not that well known. You know, many people know about, you know, basic patterns, support and resistance, but um, because it is quite a lot to take in, I mean, I've got a massive book lying around here about the Elliott Wave method. It's quite a lot to take in, but um, it is huge and it is important. It works in my view and it's a really interesting concept and not too many people know how it works. Um, there are many people doing videos on technical analysis, but actually not many people use the Elliott Wave method. And also, I must say, if I use the Elliott Wave method and I do cryptocurrency TA videos, these are the videos that take me the most time because to get the wave count right, it is a lot of work. But many people are interested in learning it and I think it, would, it is worth it. So I decided to start a new video series and we start with the most basic um, concepts within the Elliott Wave method and then we will work our way into the more advanced concepts and then I hope at some point you will be able to do your own TA by using the Elliott Wave method. So we start very very basic and then in further lessons I will expand on this and also talk about different concepts within the Elliott Wave method. First of all to really understand the Elliott Wave method it is important to understand what an impulse is. You know, in my videos, I often talk about impulsive moves, impulsive waves, but what is actually an impulsive move? So first of all, it is important to understand that. So basically the, the, the general understanding within the Elliott Wave method is that moves that go into the trend direction are impulsive. So you get here um, a move into the trend direction, which consists of five waves. This is the most basic uh, concept yeah and the most simple one and the most basic one within the uh, Elliott wave method so what you can see here is basically the move of waves of um, yeah a price chart so you get three waves which go up in this case and two waves which go down so in this case wave one three and five they go to the upside and waves two and four go to the downside but the whole trend is going up because waves one, three, and five are moving up. Waves one, three, and five always are impulsive waves. They always move into the trend direction. Now that can also be the other way around. Yeah, waves one, three, and five can also go down, but then the whole trend would also be going down. In this case here, the trend direction is up, which is also why the impulsive waves one, three, and five go up as well. There are two counter waves, waves one and four. They are corrective waves and they basically correct the move of the preceding wave. So wave two corrects wave one, wave four corrects wave three. But because there are three waves to the upside and two waves to the downside in this case, the general trend direction is up. So what you need to understand is that waves one, three and five are impulsive and waves two and four are corrective. And these waves two and four are of course weaker than waves one, three, and five, yeah? And this whole move, one, two, three, four, five, is basically a five wave structure. This is a generally an impulsive pattern, an impulsive structure, which moves into the trend direction. So this has certain rules. If you do technical analysis on such a pattern, yeah, <clears throat> there are certain rules that we need to adhere to. So basically, if one of these rules is broken, you have to redo your wave count. So doing a wave count like that is important because it can help you to understand where to set support levels, where to set resistance levels um, or where they are and where to set stop losses, for example, in your trading and generally to understand in which direction the trend is moving and when to expect a shift in the trend direction. Right. So these are rules here. So first of all, an impulsive move always consists of a five wave structure that you can see here on the chart. Of this five wave structure, the waves one, three, and five are so-called motive waves. That's how you call them, motive waves, which run into the direction of the higher level trend. Waves two and four are corrective waves and they correct the preceding move, as I said. For an impulsive move, there are the following rules. Wave four, yeah, wave four, must not cut wave one, yeah? 
So this is not possible at all. It's, a, it's allowed in a diagonal pattern, which I don't want to talk about here. This is a more complex pattern that we will talk about in later videos. But the wave four must not cut into wave one, which means if wave four on this picture here came down lower, yeah, and would basically come into the price range of wave one, then this wouldn't be a wave four and the whole and the whole wave count would need to be redone because basically then the wave count was wrong. It needs to be redone um, because the rule was broken. Wave three is also never the shortest wave. It doesn't need to be the longest one, but it must never, um, yeah, it, it is never the shortest wave. So it doesn't need to be the longest one. It could also be um, somewhere between waves one and five but it cannot be the shortest one. It oftentimes is the longest one, not only in terms of the actual price action and the, um, yeah, the, the, you know, how far it is pushing into the trend direction, but also in terms of the actual time in days, in hours or whatever, in weeks, it is oftentimes the longest one. Also importantly is that wave one, a uh, wave two, yeah, wave two must not move below the beginning of wave one. So if wave two actually moves below the starting point of wave one, it is not an impulsive pattern here. We are not moving um, in one, two, three, four, five pattern into the upside. Then it needs to be redone as well, that wave count. So as I said, if one of these rules is broken, the analysis needs to be reworked with a new wave count. So we can also understand this the other way around, which um, is then already a step further. So if you're struggling with the first concept, so maybe stop the video, watch it again. Yeah, try to take it in and post any comments or questions in the video description, uh, in, the, in the comment section. But to understand it the other way around, of course, a trend cannot always or only go up. A trend can also go down. This is what many, um, what many beginners also struggle with, that concept that an impulsive or a trend can also go down. You know, it's not always about going up. It's also a trend can shift, a trend can go down. And that is, for example, when you would, uh, could think about shorting stocks and shares, shorting cryptos in a downtrend. So what you have here then is just, you know, just swing it around basically. You've got waves one, three, and five still being the motive waves in an impulsive move to the downside, whereas waves two and four are corrective waves. In this case, moving up, basically correcting the move of the preceding waves. So again, wave two corrects wave one, wave four corrects wave three, and we are moving down in this case. So it's just a way, you know, in which direction is actually the trend moving and within every direction the trend is moving, you will see a five wave structure. This was the first tutorial video about Elliott wave method. In the next video, I will talk about ABC corrections. I've been talking about that in my crypto videos as well. And hopefully that will help you to understand more. And then in further videos, we will talk about further patterns, further more complex structures, and also how you can embed the one, two, three, four, five structure, the ABC structure into a larger chart, how to see higher level patterns as well, and how this all works together. Because it, as I said, it can be quite complex. There are waves within waves. And it's, again, it's a, a very big rule book that I've got lying around here that I've been using for years to do my analysis. Um, been doing quite a lot of trading and technical analysis in the past based on the Elliott Wave method. What I also do is I will create a playlist specifically on this channel for Elliott Wave videos. And if you have any further questions, as I said, please post it into the comment section of this video. And um, yeah, I haven't done any videos on this channel for a while now, but it's really time to catch up. Was really busy with my crypto channel, but I also want to grow this channel and really provide valuable advice for free. Well, advice, please always understand this is never financial advice. This is just education and you have to make your own financial decisions, of course, but you know, it is useful. I just try to make it simple for everybody to understand. It might still be complex to understand and you might need to rewatch it one or two times, but please feel free to do so and leave a comment and a like, and uh, I hope I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.